Hello and welcome to Comp. Hello. Hello, Lucy. Hi. How are you out there? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Oh, I'm great. We, we are back. Uh, we, we, we are off. I had to take a business trip to California and uh, I, was, I was advising on uh, earthquake preparedness mm. um, to the governor. But, uh, but then he didn't, you know. I, I, just, I, I didn't flew know out. you had that kind of political access. I don't. I, I, I flew there because I, I just got concerned. And uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I basically just went, like, I, I went to Sacramento and I just started screaming uh, in the place where the homeless go. Um, I wasn't, you know. One of, one of the um, favelas? I don't think they have favelas in Sacramento. <laughs> you're thinking of Rio de Janeiro. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, but that's neither here nor there. It was still productive. And I, th- I feel like I made my made my mark. Um, but we're back, and I'm very excited <laughs> because— so, so how did you convince the governor to take the earthquake seriously? He, he wouldn't meet with me. Oh. <laughs> no, no. It was—I uh, it was, it was, it was, flew my own dime, and uh, it was kind of a failure. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, we, we live and we learn. I'm so excited though because the you know I, I, the new Apple products they they said they're going to announce them soon mm. like on the September something and I just can't wait because I'm excited I I'm really I'm very hopeful for the new Apple Watch uh, because I keep forgetting to take my blood pressure medication and my doctor says that if I don't take it I'm I'm, I'm going to you know die oh my and uh, I just can't you know, I I'm hoping there's a new app. Uh, I think you can download apps, but I don't like you know, the, the app is too tiny to like go to the app store on the, on on the watch. Mm. So I'm, I'm really hoping they just build in something that says like you know take your blood, or maybe just tells you your blood. Maybe you can fix my blood pressure. Maybe it's a thing that goes into my wrist. Yeah, that just kind of drains some of my blood. You know what would be useful? Um, uh, an, al- like, an alarm that instead of beeping off and reminding you, just simply reminding you to take your medication. Something that maybe screams like at a, a sure at a at a shrieking kind of pitch. Maybe I can invent that. I could just scream about <laughs> uh, you know immigration <laughs> on your Apple Watch, and you go, "Oh yeah, th- why is this doing that? Oh right, because my blood pressure." Right. You know that that would be useful because honestly, you get used to alarms, but that thought of like, why is this man screaming about uh, you know immigrant immigrant violence mm. and homeless uh, you know encampments. And uh, and the capital gains tax, <laughs> right? Because oh, I I installed this to remind me of the blood pressure medication. Yeah, like it has to be a little uncomfortable. Yeah, it has to make you kind of think, like a puzzle. Yeah. Um, this would be good for regular alarms too, because you need something that'll just like infect your dreams. Yeah, and make them unpleasant. Right, and hopefully yeah. just drive you kind of a little bit. Um, yeah, because I, I think most successful people are troubled. They, I think they have. Uh, fears, irrational fears. They're they're trying to you know um, make up for something in their childhood, deep unconscious you know longings, which I don't know if I, I don't really have. Mm-hmm. That's my problem. I'm I'm fine. I mean, and people would argue, well, no, you're not. But like, but, <laughs> my, but that's my that's my point. It's like the better you are on the inside, the worse your life is. Mm-hmm. Um, the worse <laughs> of a person you are because you're not trying to. to yeah, you know, I, I, I stand up to my dad. I'm not trying to prove anything to him. I can care less. Right. I'll cook my eggs whenever I want. If he tries to tell me not to cook eggs, I'll tell him where the, you know, where he can put it. Yeah. You know. Right. Righteousness is punished in this world. And and, and but yeah. yeah, because I'm I don't have I'm not trying to impress my dad. <laughs> I just I fail. Right. Constantly. I I you know, you really need your dad to be. Uh, a psychotic force in your life. You can't. You can't get over it. Psychology is the worst thing that happens to success. Mm. You know who doesn't go to shrinks? Billionaires. Mm. Never. They, 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 they won't even. It, it, it's, yeah, they just they just mold the world around their personality. They just they just let this function profit them somehow. <laughs> they just yeah they, they just make you earn their love, which they have none to give. Mm. But you know it's a cycle. Um, so and, and speaking of which. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, if I have to create an alarm that just screams about, you know, the, the carbon footprint and uh, the, you know, the, the level of CO2 mm. in the atmosphere, I will. And also about, how, you know, how um, my friends, a friend of mine, a wife of my friend 
was attacked um, <laughs> by some. He might have been an immigrant. He might not have been. But, you know, but I'll just assume it was. Mm. And I'll scream about it. And I'll remind you, you know, <laughs> hey, new episode's out. Wow, CO2 and immigration. That's a, that's quite a mix. Right? New, yeah, it's like, it's not partisan. I mean, it's it's hyper, it's it's very partisan in both directions. Right. Point. You know, we'll hit all the boxes. You know, we talk about reproductive rights and also uh, bump fights. <laughs> you know, just we cover every base, and so there and like and it'll get it'll get you mad. We're guaranteed to get you mad somehow. Yeah. Um, and then so the, oh oh, a new episode is out. That that, that it's a nice treat. You know, yeah. Kind of, it's like it's like it's like it's like agitation. And then reward. <laughs> um, yeah, so enjoy. Also, the Patreon. If you, if, you, if, you, if you do that, you might as well, you know, you get the notification bell. You hit, you hit, you hit subscribe. And then, and then you go into Patreon if you want. Patreon.com slash Raycomp. You get extra episodes every week for five bucks a month. And you're like, I can't believe I forgot again to take my blood pressure medication. I'm, I'm not going to live long. Hmm. I'm I'm not long for the world, but I can at least listen to this this yelling man and his wife uh, <laughs> scream about you know all sorts of social issues mm. that that plague, uh, and also and, and and I think he's making up these, these traumas that he has because <laughs> he wants to get a pool. <laughs> um, you think you think people don't believe it? You threaten to burn your dad's house down? No, that's fine, but they, but that's 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 a pre-existing condition, right? Sure. They know. I mean, that, that, that's a problem. It was too forceful. Mm. It was too much. It was, it was too much of a, of a of a coming of age story. I need I needed to I I, I need my dad to stay on top. <laughs> you know, and and and, and I, I, that's a problem. I'm not trying to. You know, I need I need like. Uh, I don't know. Like, I need my dad to have, like, you know, branded me with, you know, um, a tire iron, a hot tire iron. Mm. And you go, I can't believe he did that. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna make extra clips this week. I'm going to make extra <laughs> episodes and, and, and take my, med- my blood pressure medication just to prove that he was wrong to burn me with that tire iron, <laughs> to brand me, you know? Mm-hmm. How great would that be? <laughs> I mean, imagine, imagine having that some kind of just a, such a solid thing to rail against. Yeah, he, a you, great origin story, a yeah. great injustice. Well, how'd you get into this whole comedy podcasting milieu? Well, funny you ask that. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe I'll be on the Joe Rogan experience. Hey, funny you ask that, Mister Rogan, Mister Joe Rogan. I was burned. <laughs> I was burned with a tire iron. You familiar with a tire iron? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar. Yeah, yeah. I was, my dad shoved it in my face and ear. That's what this mark is. You, you know, you might be too embarrassed to, to bring it up. You thought it was a bird mark. That's a brand with a tire iron, and that's what drives me to succeed. Because I, I never want to be in that place again. I, yeah. I never want to be lying there with that tire iron burn, and burn it, it away out of my face. Right. I never, I never want my dad to think for a second that he was right to do it. <laughs> I need him to know he was wrong because of how good I am at this podcast. Oh, man. You could win an Oscar, maybe. Yeah. With that kind of backstory. No, Daddy. <laughs> Not today. No, no, no burns. To, I mean, we, maybe we should maybe we should make this show instead of calling it Cump. It should be called No Burns Today, Daddy. It's a little long. <laughs> don't burn me, Daddy. What about yeah? Because that show. I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm plugging some other show, but there's a show called Don't Call Me Daddy, and it's very successful. Uh, we'll call her Daddy. I mean, oh, it's called Call. Don't call it. Don't call me Daddy. We should name it. That we should rename the podcast. Well, maybe I was gonna say Don't Don't Burn Me, Daddy. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you know, if you were searching for, for call, call, call me daddy, call her dad, whatever it is, yeah. and you found don't burn me daddy, you'd click on that, right? <laughs> you go, what true. is this? Don't burn me daddy. <laughs> I mean, I wonder if that's good for the algorithm. Burn, I mean, this so, you're so limiting now. With, you, you can't even say, can you say burn? I mean, burn can mean multiple things. What if I'm a burn victim? And this is a show for burn victims. <laughs> yeah. You're going you're gonna to silence me? Right. You're going to stigmatize that? You're going to silence me? Apple? Well, what Apple we... Podcast, even though I promoted your, your, your new watch that hopefully comes with a blood pressure app that, that drains my blood. <laughs> I would love, just drain some of my blood. What's the problem? If there's too much blood, take some of it out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> can you give me a salve for my burn? <laughs> what is it, salve? How do you say that? Salve? 
Oh, we should spay, we should sell specialty salves. I mean, that, now we're getting into dangerous territory. Yeah. Now we're getting the real huckster. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I would love to. I mean, would you be cool with that? I feel like if you buy burned salves from me, you don't deserve. I mean, yeah. it's like. I mean, you, look, I would try to make them work. I would I would put, like, vinegar in them or whatever. Vinegar? Makes them work. Vinegar? I, mean, I, I don't know what, what cures burns. Do you put vinegar on your burns? <laughs> Stop doing that. I don't think it's good. I think it's very acidic. I would, I would you know, what, 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 what cures them? I don't uh, no, I mean, I, I think time. Time. Mostly time. Yeah. But I mean, like, ice packs and aloe. Oh, right. Cold things. Cold yeah. things. Aloe. Uh, and aloe. Soothing things. Not acidic things, typically. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying in and of itself, you know, vinegar would burn your skin, but I don't think it's going to help, you know, burn. It's not, that's not what it's for. It's for making things tart. You know, I've heard, I've heard that burns are, are homeopathically treated. So we, we can. Well, just, wait, you're saying wait, you've heard that they can be, <laughs> not that like if you go to the. Ho- I mean, I don't know if you go to the hospital if it's like burns are actually never treated with anything but homeopathy. It's always it's all, they're, they're, <laughs> burns are actually all in your head. It's all just you know emotional trauma. But look, maybe it's not homeopathy. It's homo something. No, it's homeo. But they can be. I think is the idea. Not that like. But, so you put hot stuff on a, on a hot burn. I, is that what homeopathy I, means? <laughs> Um, you just, you I, I, that just, might not be the right word. So if you break your leg, you just break it again. Anyway, my point is we should just we should just send people yeah a, a, just like a bucket of boiling water. <laughs> so like when you, this is an interesting idea. I mean now you it's such a crazy idea that I'm just intrigued how we would do that. Maybe we how can, do you send someone a bucket of boiling water? Well, we might innovate something. Do we have like a thermos? I don't know if thermoses stay boiling. Yeah, like a big thermos. Or do we just send them a kettle? A, like a, a full electric kettle and say, plug this in first for a few minutes. The container <laughs> has to be cool or the, they'll realize that it's just hot, that they can just make hot water themselves to pour on the, their wounds. Cool or like temperature wise or like, like hip, like like stylish. You yeah, hip, you yeah. stylish. Not not cold. Okay. Like one of those like perfect box designs. Right. You know? That's all, that's, that's double. So you, you're looking, at, we're, 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 we're looking. Perfect cube designs, you know, like something like what Steve Jobs would do. So yeah, We got yeah. to put it in that. We only had one thing that was a cube. Yeah. I mean, not everything he made was cubes. <laughs> you know? I mean, the, the next cube, which was a big failure, by the way. I don't know if you watched the whole movie, but that that, that cube he made did not sell well. Um, but yeah, okay, so you want to make a cube that's actually an ke- electric kettle. Hmm. Battery powered, I presume, because you don't, yeah, we don't want, yeah, we're trying to go over the Apple motif. We don't want to, like, you know, uh, we want it to be stylish, so no cords coming out of it like an iron. Right. So we're just kind of, it's going to be like electrically powered. I mean, I feel like how much are we going to charge for it? Because it's going to start eating into our profits. For Hokum, I think this is going to be a lot of overhead for Hokum. Yeah, that's true. Usually, you're trying to sell some like you know grass that you stole from your neighbor as like as a, as an herb. That's a good point. We're we're, we're building you know, custom electric kettles with battery power. It's just. So can, people can pour boiling water on their skin. <laughs> it was like, I mean, how are we going to explain this to Congress? Because it's going to it's gonna come up. Yeah. Katie, what's her name? Katie Porter? Oh, right. Katie gonna Porter's going to rake us through the cold. Just a heavy woman screaming at us. Yeah. I don't want that. <laughs> no, you know, it's just, yeah. I mean, I, I it sounds fun, but. Or Elizabeth Warren with her awful voice. Well, I'll, I'll, yell, I'll, I'll yell her down. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll, she'll shut up. But Katie Porter, I'm not sure. Like, I would just yell at Katie Porter. And she'd yell like, just keep. It would be, it would be like elevated screaming match. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a real bullfight. But I'm the one who burned people with a cube, <laughs> so I feel like I would. I'd look worse. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, we're both yelling, but yeah, but you, you, you're here for because you burn people. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's like, I'm, 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 I'm an elected official, so it's like, you know, mm. I mean, it's just, I just have a natural thing here. Mm reason to yell you're just a man <laughs> this, this men, men are under, under attack in this country that's, yeah you believe that um how, why do you feel that way that's that's just, dissect it. well just what we talked about here like how, sure. you know, <laughs> i wouldn't be able I, I i i just i can predict things i, I know i would be treated poorly because i'm a man yeah. in that situation right I mean, look i mean look i i got men have to do all the work with the, with dates they gotta take women out mm-hmm. you gotta ask them out right Mm-hmm. And they got, and then they got buy him dinners, right? right? And, they, and then you come up with this idea, you know, the cube. I mean, you you actually came up with the cube idea. <laughs> well, I'm, Steve Jobs came up with the cube idea, right? We're just kind of lifting Steve Jobs' idea. Uh, 
I don't know. It just feels like, yeah, men are just doing a lot of the emotional labor in this country. Mm -hmm. But women just, you know, say, buy me things. (laughs) (laughs) Buy me things. (laughs) Anyway, Uh, yeah. uh, You may be right. Eh, Could be, right? (laughs) Yeah. It's one of those. It could be true. No one really knows. Uh, Welcome to the show. Did we resolve what we were discussing? Doesn't matter. We have a... Are you familiar with this, uh, this, this, this? Are you a dog person, by the way? I am a dog person. I love little. I love cute little dogs. Yeah. I love Labrador retrievers. Well, I, all right. Yeah. Is that it? Golden just retrievers. Only retrievers. You just <laughs> want dogs to fetch things for you. I mean, I I think it's cool that they do that. Yeah, but I'm saying you like old. You, okay. Um, you know, you I like old dogs. I like uh um, you're just listening listen to a couple it's like you know just, those are just two, I love all races. Dogs, I love I Chinese like. people, <laughs> Hispanics. Anyway, like you wouldn't do that. <laughs> Don't single out it's like you love all dogs. What about you? Are you a dog person? I'm fine with dogs. I like them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not like I was I'm not, I wasn't asking that. I wasn't hope I I don't want this to become a thing where it's like I got to list every dog I like. You you have self-defense fantasies with regards to dogs. I just won't let a dog kill me for no reason. Mm-hmm. I refuse. I refuse to be one of these people in a movie who's just like. <laughs> so if he has a good cause, like who who is armed, also let's just say, mm. uh, and still lets a dog, you know, the dog jumps up ten feet in the air. Every dog I've ever seen has been lazy, mm-hmm. and somehow a dog is just going to jump ten feet in the air and take away my armaments. You know. Yeah. Uh, whatever. So, uh, and it's just a trope in a movie. I feel like I would fight a dog if I had to. Right. I do, you know, I don't know jujitsu, but I know the basics. I've seen it on TV. I feel like, I, you know, you grab it. I, mean, I, would, I would never hurt a dog unless it was trying to, like, hurt you, for for instance. And then you grab an arm and you pull. And I don't know. I know they're strong. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I don't want to get into it. This is, this is not, you, you've trapped me <laughs> into, into a situation where I'm just, you know, I, I, I'm not here to bring, this is not my point. This is not what I want to talk about. <laughs> I just, I just, you like dogs. That, I, there we go. I yeah. do like them. Yeah. You like them. So do I. Uh, there's this story of a. Uh, I'm not familiar with him. He died. He he passed away. Alain Delon. Hmm. He was a French film star. He worked with Godard, um, probably Truffaut. I don't know hmm. who else is Louis Malle. Maybe who else is a French director? Um, Renoir. Ben Well is he? Is he no, French? He was, he was Spanish, I believe. Um, the, the Spanish surrealist, mm. or is he Argentinian? I don't know. Uh, point is, he's he's passed away. An R.I.P. to Alain Delon. Um, but there's a story here that he, in his will, requested to be buried with his dog. Uh, the only problem is that the dog is still alive, and he knew this. Not this is not a technicality. He said, uh. Before he died this week, French film icon Alain Delon once suggested he wanted his beloved sheepdog, Lubo, buried with him. To the relief of animal lovers around France, Lubo will be allowed to survive. Um, apparently, he said, well, here, I've had 50 dogs in my life, but I have a particular relationship with this one. If I die before him, I'll ask the veterinarian for us to leave together. So he definitely intended to, like, put the dog down. That was his, that was his big ask. I mean, and everyone seems to be, like, very happy that his family is just kind of ignoring mm-hmm. his dying wish. And I don't know how I feel. About it. I, I don't feel good about this. I don't know. I don't, I don't think you should get to kill a dog just because you're dead. Look, <laughs> not everyone should. I'm not saying everyone. But, you know, it's like this, but this, this Alain Delon is like a film star. We don't know him because we're not French. But, I mean, if, if Tom Hanks wanted to you know, be buried with Hooch. From Turner and Hooch? <laughs> yeah. You don't think Tom Hanks is earned that? I, I, just think, I just think how much could you care about Hooch if you don't want him to live a full life? I mean, how, how much of a life are you going to have without your owner? You know? <laughs> yeah. some, guy, some guy doesn't even care about you, doesn't even rub salves on you um, when, he, when he accidentally burns you. Mm. You know? That's, I bet you Elaine Delon, would, you know, if he accidentally burned his dog, he would rub a salve on him. Yeah, I guess he would. And so would Tom Hanks if he if he burnt Hooch. Remember Turner and Hooch? That yeah. disgusting dog. That dog was disgusting. <laughs> just slobbering everywhere. I'm sick of everyone acting like every dog. You know, dogs, they're just all the beautiful dogs. So when, when they're doing disgusting, oh, you're, you're a messy boy. It just got to keep slobbering everywhere. So I don't want this dog slobbering on my arm. It, smell, it smells. 
<laughs> you know, these dogs smell sometimes, and people don't bathe them because they they bite. I, I had a landlord who had a messy. There was one of these little little dogs. It was very hairy, and it had. <laughs> I just thought that. I mean, there was like it had this like matted hair, like dirt matted into its fur. It's fur, right? That's what you yeah. call it. And uh, when they and and they would come in and out. It was just I, I had a, I I rented a windowless room in their house, but they had like you know it wasn't like this is not legal. Oh, but I'm not a rat. I'm just saying, it was not a nice apartment. And uh, it was terrible in the summer. Torture. Uh. And uh, one time I was leaving, and I was, and I was trying to be nice, and I, like, the dog was like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and I went to pet it, and, like, it bit me. <gasps> and, and and the lady didn't even say, he started like, well, oh, no, you can't let you. And, like, I'm, like, why do you think we did? It's so disgusting or something. We can't, we can't clean it. <laughs> and then it's like, well, you know, to be fair, I just thought you were like disgusting people. Like yeah. you were just, you weren't like your house is not that great. Kind of smells like I walked in half the time. I mean, it was fine. I mean, I didn't like, I didn't think that much of it. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm not saying I, I'm not judging you. Look at you, you're a messy dog. But like, yeah, like, I mean, you. It's not like I, I, I walked into you know uh, some you know some freaking June Cleaver house. <laughs> You know, <laughs> which is a woman's vacuuming constantly. Like, oh, I'm going to get you a lemonade. It's like, oh, it was a dirty ass dog. No, you kind of like, whatever. It's shit everywhere. It's also just kind of a weird explanation to have. It's, yeah. like, it's like, our dog is so dirty. We don't want to clean it. Right. Like, yeah. Just... I mean, it had awful. It was such a nasty <laughs> dog. And did, it had, did it drop blood? A little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I I don't think I got tested. I, I'm, I mean, it was years ago. I should be fine. I, if it was going to do anything, it would kill me, right? Mm, yeah, I think it probably would. There's no way I've had rabies for eight years. Yeah. Is there? <laughs> anyway. Um, I don't drink enough water. They say they say you fear water when you... Whatever. <laughs> we'll, we'll address that later. Uh, my point is, that's a filthy dog. And I'm not going to act like it was a nice... Uh, I liked it. Mm. Um. But no, I just feel like this 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 film star. Why can't they just wait until the dog dies and then bury it with them? Because then what, these things have to be finished. It's <laughs> a, it's a, it's a state. What do they call that? Uh, probate. You know, mm. you have a guy who's the executor of the will, and he wants to get it done, right? Yeah. It's just let's close the books because if you don't close the books, then like I don't know, maybe maybe that you know, like oh I I got the, I got the the Paris house in the will. I'm one of the kids. But I mean, like, but until the whole will is executed, maybe nothing's final, mm. and I have, I'm not, and I'm, uh, and I'm in the pool, just constantly dreading that somehow someone's going to argue some some uh, addendum to the will. No, just finish the will, finish the probate. Yeah. And so the dog either lives or dies. And I'm just saying, like, I just feel like sometimes, like, you earn. This is the problem. I mean, this is the problem with our society is that we don't. Uh, care about tradition, yeah, and we just think old people are just you know, they're just kooks, right? And they and they fought the Great War for nothing, <laughs> you know. And this guy just you know, look, he made he entertained people for decades, <laughs> yeah. I, I assume. Why well, can't I feel like it would have been a nice, th it, it would be a nice thing for him to just put the dog down at least before he dies, yeah. And then by the time he's dead, the dog's already dead, so and they think, can be buried together. So you think if like someone's like clean, if you, if you get like into a car accident, and you're, like, you're hemorrhaging blood, and like you should have to like make arrangements while you're like trying, like you're in the ICU, and like before they put you down into anesthesia, mm. you have to be like, no, hold on, some someone kill kill, <laughs> take my dog's life, please, <laughs> just take my dog's life away in case I die. Like I don't know how that works. I mean, if you're having cancer, it's like. Just, and your kid's like crying, and you're like, I can't. You can barely talk, and you have throat cancer, and you and you're going like, kill the dog, <laughs> kill the dog. Kill. What? What dad? What dad? The dog, kill the dog. <laughs> don't let the dog live. I just I don't know how this would come up. Well, ideally, he would go. Look, he would go to the vet when he was still healthy enough to oversee his dog's death and to be there with the dog okay. while it died. When would he do this? <laughs> I don't know. Like now, if that's what you want to do, do it now. So you think you you think it's just like you. So you're taking an interesting point. <laughs> you're like, don't just kill the dog because you died. But if, you know, if you want, unless you, he's he's an alternative. Though. He's a compromise. Just kill him now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I don't think anyone agrees with you. I think you're taking a very wild, like please no sides kind of. You're like you're like King Solomon when he's like cut the baby in half. <laughs> 
It's like, well, no one wants that. No one wants half a baby. Mm-hmm. But one woman did. Yeah, that she really wanted to have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she probably disapp- you think she's disappointed when, like, dude, no, now we're talking. Honestly, so he was really lucky that that woman was not just selfish, but also crazy enough to want the baby cut in half. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise it would, it would, it would just look bad. Yeah. Because then what, like... No, you take it. No, you take it. I also care about the baby. Well, now what do I do? Yeah. It's like he got one. Like, okay, yeah, take, give me half the baby. There you go. You played yourself. <laughs> you played yourself, lady. Oh, uh, so you're. So I, I say he should be allowed to take the dog with him. You say he should just, you know, as soon as he gets it home from the from the pound or every or the or the or the puppy store, just take do it then. <laughs> Just never, just, just, just. Be, I mean, I'm when, 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 like, how long do you, do you think you should do it in case you die? Like every week, just get a new dog and put it down in case you die. I just think if you're okay with the idea of your dog dying because you're dead, you, you'd probably be just as happy with like a taxidermy version of your dog. I don't know if that's true. I don't think you have to like. I think look. You just think of the dog as an object, you know. Well, look. Here's the thing. I look. I we have a cat now, and we took it in. It wasn't, I mean, people, some people say they rescued a cat or a dog, but we actually rescued, it was stranded. Mm. We took it in. We didn't get it from a vet. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to say we're better than you, where you didn't really rescue your dog. <laughs> we're better than you. We take cats off the street. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, you act like, oh, you're like, oh you, we re- the rescue us, oh, so you adopted it. Well, I rescued it. Well, all right, but we yeah. actually, just, I mean, then we, what, we double rescue it then? Mm-mm. Whatever. I'm not trying to be better. <laughs> but, uh, and I love the cat. The cat Dana. Sweet Dana Scully. Yeah. You named it that because mm-hmm. you love the X-Files. We never watched it, though. We never watched it, watched, watched it together, yeah. But you, you it's called Dana Scully. All right. I mean, it's fine. I, I mean, mean. I love it. It's a good you, name. You liked it. No, it's a good name. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just, I'm, I'm insecure a little bit for some reason about, like, people thinking I'm some X-Files nerd. I mean, I'm nerd for other things. I, I mean. I just don't have the back. I can't back it up. Like, oh, did you ever see this episode? No, I've, I've seen, like, you know, episodes here and there. I watched it. Like, I watched it sometimes when it was on. There is at least one X Files episode that stands out in my memory a lot. Which one? The one with the little guy on the skateboard. Oh, with mom, the siblings. mother one. Yeah. The, I, okay, yeah. Well, that's, that's the best episode. Oh, that's great. When like they're all just aren't they all just impregnating their mom? <laughs> so yeah, it was something weird. It's a weird episode. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone, I mean, Dana and Mulder were just impregnating <laughs> his mom. Uh, anyway, uh, so I love the cat. That being said. It's like I don't know if you if you have to hold the standard of like the cat like the same way if you had a kid would you like give your life for your kid? Most people at least lie and say yes, right? Yeah. Like you know, I don't know why you have to die. I mean, how often do you have to die for your? I mean, would you, I guess you, you jump in front of a bullet. I guess it depends. It, you know, it depends on if he was in if, if he was about that life. Right. Like am I am I jumping on a bullet? You that you kind of you know. <laughs> If, if maybe you don't deserve it, but like you kind of you were in the game, <laughs> you know. Like if, if you're like a if you're like, if you're if you just live your life as like a you know, you're a veterinarian, let's just say, and, you, and your son becomes a, a you know a gang boy. He's in that. He's about that about that life. <laughs> I mean, should you really? I mean, you're saving a lot. I mean, he, and he's done awful things. Yeah. Should you jump in front of a bullet to? to I mean, you're you're saving animals, right? Or maybe a regular doctor, and even more so. See my point? Good point, yeah. Yeah. So don't, don't always save your kid. <laughs> but, uh, no, but, like, the point is, uh, I don't know if I, I don't think everyone who has a pet should have to hold themselves to the standard of, like, I'll die for my pet. It's nice. It's nice to think about. But. Well, no, just just don't order the death of your pet. Right, but I'm just saying, like, you're, like, uh, sure, just but you 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 kind don't of. Don't fight legally to be able to do it. Well, yeah, but, like, your idea that you don't actually care, like, if, if you just, if you would do this, then you don't really even love your pet at all. I think there's pet love and there's human love. And it doesn't, it doesn't sound nice to say, but it's, there is pet love. And some people love pets more than humans, but they're weird and because they've been emotionally scarred too much in their life. It, it is different. But yeah. I also think, like, you don't even have to love animals that much to not kill them. Well, I mean, <laughs> we all eat. We all enjoy well, I mean, nice. The, the pet animals. We all enjoy. enjoy <laughs> no, obviously, not the food animals. Yeah, we all enjoy a nice Slim Jim or two every day. <laughs> <laughs> Stab it to a Slim Jim. But, you know, oh, oh, oh just, it's not alive anymore? Just meat? <laughs> this, whatever this meat's from isn't alive? I thought they lived. You don't really eat Slim Jims. 
No, I don't. Slander. Um, I can't believe we're on different sides of this. Yeah. I think he, like this guy. This guy. It's intense. Yeah, you don't care about you don't care about film the same way I do. <laughs> I think I, I think I <laughs> care about film enough. To let a, a great actor kill anyone. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a film enthusiast. I'm a, I'm a cinephile, perhaps. And I, even though I'm not familiar with Elaine DeLong, I might have seen him around. I just don't remember. <laughs> you don't yeah. even know him. What? You don't. You don't even know. Him. Well, I might. I mean, I'm. I'm I've seen. You know, I, one thing: if this was Denzel Washington. Oh, so, oh so Denzel Washington is the only actor. You know, like not every movie's got to be Man on Fire. I would still disagree with him killing his dog. By the way, I've seen plenty of French films, and so. I've seen some Goudards, I've seen some Truffauts, mm. some Louis Miles, some uh, Renoirs. He might have been one of those. I don't know for <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, mean, like, I don't know him for sure. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's like, whatever. The point is, but like, <laughs> what, what if uh, they got Mal- 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 Maldondo or whatever? You know what I'm talking about? The big French Maldondo? Maldondo? Look at Maldondo. French actor, right? Maldondo. Write, write French actor afterwards. See if it comes up. Mal, not, that's a different guy. But, you know, you, there's, there's a guy. Jump, boom, bomb, 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 bomb down, though. <laughs> the famous French actor, Roman Maldondo of Blue Bloods. <laughs> <laughs> who's the guy who was in, I don't a- remember. Angelo Maldondo? No, it was, I think it was a different name. Hmm. Bel, 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 just write most famous French actors. No. <laughs> You'll know this guy. It's Bel- Belmanon or Bel- Beldemon. Uh, the, oh, oh, wait. Elaine Delon is, is right up there. So he might be the best. I, oh, there we go. Bel- Belmondo. John Paul Belmondo. He died a few years ago. I knew that guy. But uh, Elaine Delon comes up right away. So this, I, this is my point. This guy should be honored a little bit. Mm. I mean, you, you know, if, if he wanted to have some calves slaughtered at his funeral, um, you know, I, I would, you know, or like sacrifice the way they would do like at the old temple in the Bible. Mm. Would you, would, would you, you wouldn't wince at that, would you? You said that's fine if you wanted to have some, you know, slaughtered goats. That's true. I don't, I don't tend to wince at animal sacrifice. Yeah. So I mean, it's, I think, I think it's fine. I, I, I don't want the dog to have to go, but I just feel like we're just. Honor a great man. Look, I think you should be able to. Here's another compromise I'm willing to offer. Sure. Maybe his loved one should be able to tell him that they're going to do it. Yeah. But then just not do it. Because it's not like he's going to wake up and pet the dog or anything. He's just going to be dead in there. Yeah. I think you should. You need. We need to leave room legally to lie to the elderly about what will be done with their remains. You know? Yeah. So you'll just. This will trickle down. <laughs> Everyone will know, and they'll resent. They'll just resent the young, mm. and you'll never get the house. They'll, you know, you won't play that game. They'll start playing other games. The, yeah. old, the old, the infirmed. Yeah. Where the will, all of a sudden, the will is not what you thought it was. Mm. That you know, that some some woman, some loose woman got got the house you thought you were gonna get. Oh yeah, maybe it's tied to like the fact you have to do this or you don't get. Well, he didn't do that. That's why that's why they played him mm. like a fool. Yeah. But he should. I'm just saying, but this is gonna these new these stories are gonna come out. You know, it's in the newspaper. Why did the family even talk about it? Kind of like they should have kept the mouth shut. Right. Because now it's just gonna this is gonna be a problem for everyone. <laughs> Imagine then, G- he has like a ten year old daughter who loves that dog. Yeah. She's just like, well, I bet, I bet you know. <laughs> she's like, well, what she, you know, how is she paying the bills? Yeah. Good point. The guy was like the guy was like eighty years old. So oh. I mean, you know. Oh, like, Jean Renault is on there. On the list of famous French actors. Oh, yeah, from the professional. Yeah. And other things. You like Jean Renault? Would you let Jean Renault bury a dog? Have a dog uh, entombed alive? You Maybe. like you liked him in that movie with the what was that movie where he like they come, they were like knights who come back to life? Oh, oh, oh. Just visiting or something. Oh yeah, I forget what it's called. It's, but yeah. He's just a French knight, whatever that means. Yeah, it's pretty good. I never saw it. <laughs> I, I, I want to say it's called We're Back, but that's the dinosaur <laughs> movie. <laughs> Just yeah, click on Jean Renault and see what movie. It, 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 that's how you find it. It's some movie. It's something where they, it's just two nights. Just visiting. Yeah. Just visit. Oh, wait, did, I get, did I get it right? I, I think you did get it right. Yeah. Wow. How do I even? I, I my brain is full of these things. Useless names of movies I've never seen, and, <laughs> and but you know I can't I can't remember to take my pills. <laughs> and medications. 
Just just drain my blood, will you? <laughs> uh, the two, 2001 action comedy film and American remake of the French film Les Visiteurs. Why is every mo- mo- like remake of a movie just like Les Visiteurs? I don't know. I just... Did you ever see the the uh, uh, Gerard Depardieu movie where he plays a rat, like a guy oh. on a farm with rabbits? No. What's it about? <laughs> um, I remember there's a movie I... called Not Like Don't Don't bang, Don't Bang My Daughter or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was a movie. It was, a, it was some movie where this guy was, he was upset that like boys were starting to like hit on his girl, his daughter. Mm. Um. And then played that kink that. Uh, I don't know. It was on channel. It was on TV when I was a kid. Mm. You remember that? No. Whatever. <laughs> I, I didn't know who George Depardieu was. I mean, I still don't really know who he, I know he's a famous French actor, but that's the only movie I remember him being in. Mm. I don't remember. I mean, if I see anything he was in, I don't know. Was he in Napoleon? Who cares? <laughs> cares about any of this? Um, what's going on with reproduction rights? <laughs> um, Trump. Donald Trump? Donald Trump. Interesting. Uh, he he posted. He's running for president, right? He is. He's a presidential candidate. Inter- yeah. For like the second time. Third time. Third time, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to make me look dumb. <laughs> uh, he, he posted something promoting reproductive rights, which is a little surprising. Why is that surprise? I mean, he's a guy who likes to have kids. He's got a lot of kids. Why wouldn't he want more kids around? What's going on? No, no, he said he's for reproductive. Like the, the, he he posted that his administration was going to be great for reproductive rights. Well, the right to reproduce, I think he meant. Well, I think he said just reproductive rights. I think I, I think it's the game they're playing. Yeah. No, no, I agree. I think no, yeah, no, no. I don't think he's telling the truth. But. Well, I mean, why wouldn't he be? Because because he, I mean, technically he didn't like outlaw anything, right? Technically, I understand. I'm not being coy, but I'm just saying technically. He appointed Supreme Court judges. He did, and he he said he was proud and happy that it happened, right? Yeah. That Roe Ro v. Wade was overturned. Yeah, yeah. He Regardless, he didn't actually vote to overturn. I mean, you, you you just say he's a fan of states' rights. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I don't know. He's a you know, but it's just like he. I think he he. You gotta be careful to not overplay your hand because technically he is. You know, he might just be like, I'm just all for, you know, states. I like, I like the idea that Delaware can make their own decisions. Right. Yeah, that's true. But you know, but but you you would counter though. You you would you wouldn't agree with that. I think I think that they got a lot of pushback over the IVF stuff. What's that? Is that the uh, the uh, is that a superhero movie? <laughs> the uh, in, vir- in in vitro fertilization. Oh, is that when okay? Yeah, your womb can't hold a baby. Yeah, and they yeah. got a. Put a fake womb inside you. Glue inside like a sheep's, you. A sheep's womb. So it sticks in your uterus. Is that like a sheep's womb? <laughs> Why can't they just give you a sheep's womb? Yeah. I guess I wouldn't. Whatever. I mean. I mean, we drink other animals' milk. Why can't we grow babies in other animals' wombs? We should really write a paper. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't say that. <laughs> Look, we drink other animals' milk. What's the problem here? I remember vaguely hearing that there was some kind of experimental research about <laughs> growing fetuses and dead bodies. Yeah. But um. Yeah. Finally, but you get some use out of them. Yeah. I mean, Matt, what? I mean, are they dead? Or are we keep? Are they just brain dead? Are we keeping them alive? Or are we literally just? I mean, I don't want my baby to be born in a decomposing corpse. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want that either. It's disgusting. It's not a great start. You ever smell the decomposing corpse? <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> I don't want my baby. To, like, that's, 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 like, I mean, babies get trauma because you like, you know, I mean, people are afraid to have sex on a, when they're pregnant, you mm-hmm. know, because it could poke them, even though it's not usually, or like, you know, or like they don't want to like run when they're pregnant. Are we going to grow a baby in a rotten corpse? Yeah. That seems crazy. It can't be good. How many babies do we need? Do we need, really need more babies? <laughs> At this point, we have to question like whether or not these babies are so imperative. Right. I mean, if you're so baby crazy, like, I got to have a baby. He's like, well, I can grow it in this rotting dead person. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I mean, <laughs> why is that? Like, who would say yes to that? <laughs> not someone who should be a mother, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it. I'm just imagining one of those testimonies where it's like, we're so grateful. We're so grateful to have grown our, we, uh, I, I'm so grateful for my miracle baby that was grown in a decomposing corpse. <laughs> my dead father. 
<laughs> would, it, would that be a woman? I guess, or would they just take a? Would they take a? It might not have to be a woman. That's are, the crazy are, are thing. Are they literally just cutting open a, bo- like a dead body and like just shoving like a, a womb <laughs> inside of it and not even connected to anything? It just keeps it warm, kind of. I know. How does this help? <laughs> it's dead. Like it's dead. How does that help anything? Is it blood pumping? Why? Yeah. Why is it at that point? Just put it in a bag. I wonder if it would require some kind of condition of brain, being brain dead or something. Like Terry, remember Terry Shivo? Yeah. So you think you think the guy, the, the husband who wanted to put her put her down or whatever, <laughs> the, 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 pull the plug? Mm. You think you know he should be? Hey, that could they, they, we could have grown babies inside her. <laughs> you animal, you monster. It would. It, it might actually end up resolving a lot of these conflicts. You know, for familiar. who? You know, just hey, if you're she's not staying alive, she's not coming back to life, and she's not. <sighs> Going to be totally dead. She's gonna grow a baby. So you, you think he like this guy's like? Look, I I my my wife's not because brain dead is like I don't, people might not realize. I were I worked. I've seen brains that were brain dead. And yeah, they're soupy. Right. They, like I didn't know that before I saw one because I worked with Morgan. Like it's physically. And before that, you were kind of on the fence about the whole like Terry Shivo situation. Right? Uh, yeah, I just didn't know. It seemed like like well, look, maybe, maybe technology can bring it back. But then you see, when, again, I'm not a doctor, and I'm not. I mean, I remember asking the doctor about. Oh, so like this is kind of when they say brain dead. I mean, and then, like they kind of confirmed what I was saying. Mm. But again, I don't want to like don't at me if I'm if you're a biologist. <laughs> but uh, it seems to me like it, lo- it like it loses physical structure, right? Yeah. I don't know. You can really repair it at that point. Yeah. How do you how do you bring that back together? I don't think you do. Mm. I mean, unless there's like, you know, unless we start getting scanned, <laughs> right? Like, so it could be a version where they scan your brain and then little robots, you know, piece it back together, or, you know, quickly. Or you would need some kind of tenant technology where it's, it could like unmelt Invert an your ice brain. cream cone. Yeah. That's. that's <laughs> <laughs> the unmelt the ice cream cone of your brain. Quick, invert my wife's brain <laughs> so she can live again. What if you tenants go in there and reverse my wife's brain? I mean, I, I, the fact that Christopher Nolan isn't constantly just bombarded <laughs> with questions like that, it's, it's a shame. Because, I mean, honestly, it's, I've been watching Tenant again. It's a fun movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't really make any sense. If you, you know, like The movie can make sense, but then you go, oh, this doesn't make like oh, I was invert my wife's brain. Whatever. <laughs> cause, 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 Effect comes after cause. That's just the way we see it. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> so someone's head blows up because they got hit with a, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, got a, a brick fell on it. Yeah. Oh, the, 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 the my exploding head caused a brick to fall off a building. <laughs> or Penny from the Empire State Building. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Whatever. It's a fun movie. And, uh, yeah, point is, Terry Shiva would be, so you think that, you know, so in that context, I'm saying it's, it's, it's soupy is my point. There's no bringing you back. I'm, I'm a man, and I don't even like to think of it as you, but like a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a husband to a, a woman who's brain dead. Mm. And like, it's not, I know, I know. I, 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 in this situation, I still knew there's soup in there. Like, we're not bringing her back. Yeah. And I, this, is, this just seems grotesque. And I, I'm, I, 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 you might as well be dead. And I like to just start the grieving process and get over it eventually, mm. if I can. And you're like, no. We're going to grow babies inside her. <laughs> We're going to grow other men's babies inside your wife. Please don't do that. Please don't grow other men's babies inside my dead wife. I can't, I, I, I can't think of a logical reason, but it, it will hurt my feelings. It really, I just don't want that. It'll just, it'll just really lay me low if you do that. <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't know if I can get over that. that like, you know, it's like I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, how we used to, you know, just our banter and our little and our flirtations and our, our cuddling. And, and then I think about another man's child just growing inside her. <laughs> I mean, it's bad enough when that happens and they're alive. <laughs> but you're just, you're just, a, I mean, I don't know. Mm. I don't know how to process that. Yeah. If it's, the technology ever comes to fruition, I would hope you have to opt into it. That seems like something they do in the Matrix. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, and then, like, I mean, and we're powering, like, a small... You're trying to like rebuild some damaged society. Yeah, we're just we're just powering some robots' air conditioning so the, <laughs> right. the, the, the servers don't get overheated <laughs> or whatever. You know, I, I get it. Biochem, bioelectric, whatever. You know, hook. You know that, that that fine. We're all just batteries. But the idea of you, my wife, not you, because that, that's, uh, that's too painful to even think about. <laughs> but a theoretical wife being just being just a, a dead broodmare. Oof. <laughs> That's a lot, mm. but the point is, so, but Trump, he said he'd be great. For, what, what is he saying here? 
Um, What's his case? Maybe well, let's hear him out. So this is this is an article from like a conservative paper. But uh, okay, so conservatives react to Donald Trump's post promoting reproductive rights. The Daily, Wire, the Daily Wire is conservative. <laughs> I've heard that the, the Ben Shapiro one. Yeah, I feel like he's moderate, right? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> the former former President Donald Trump on Friday said that uh, said on social media that a future Trump administration will be great for reproductive rights, setting off various reactions online. Democrats have been la- la- laser focused on the issue of abortion for upcoming elections, routinely claiming that pro-life laws are responsible for hurting women and telling Americans that Trump wants to outlaw abortion in all cases which is not Trump's position. Again, address, addressing the issue on Friday, Trump wrote on Truth Social, my administration will be great for women and their reproductive rights. The term reproductive rights is used synonymously with abortion by Democrats. It's unclear if Trump meant the same. Well, that's like, I think, what, I, look, that's, it's a good lesson at the very least because uh, reproductive rights is, you know, maybe, maybe you think it's right that it's used only by the people who want, you know, who, who want the option to have abortion. It's, it makes the most logical sense, I'll grant you. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it, maybe 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 women uh, who are, have too much of a monopoly on the term. Maybe. It's it's like saying, uh, like, what's another kind of right you can have? You could have the right. I mean, you you should have. I think you should have the right if you're a man to like, um, you know, like masturbate without putting your sperm in a cup and bringing it to a sperm bank. I mean, you do, you do have that right. But, well, I think you should. Right. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. I think that. I Is think someone trying good. to take that right away? <laughs> I think I think that should stay right. Sure. I'm just saying, like, in this vein, do you think like, uh, like civil rights, right? Could like, could um, a cop, like, you know, just should cops get, you know, we should we focus on civil rights for cops, mm. or you know, or 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 like <laughs> or dictators? Yeah. Or like, um, what other kind of rights are there? I'm just saying this is counterintuitive, but you know maybe you know, if you're a Democrat, you should maybe think about using this this this, this these techniques mm-hmm. for your own advantage. Yeah, that's a good point. So like instead of being like, oh, he's lying about this, how about you just lie, just lie back? <laughs> you think it's deceptive? Do it then. Just do. Oh, this is cool now. We'll say this. There's not. It's not going to get better. No one's going to like you know clean the record up. Hmm. It's not like there's, there's not going to be a time when we look back and go, oh, remember those crazy years. Where like we all just kind of like got really polarized, and like and 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 just buckled into our haunches, and and, and fought like rabbits. Hmm. That's not gonna, you know, we're we're, gonna, we're all we're heading for a bruising. <laughs> 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 so why not just you know just just make stuff up? Yeah, good point. Just like our. Uh, Daily co-founder Jerry Boring told Trump's pro-life legacy. While deeming the reproductive rights post Trump's worst statement since his first, wait, what? Read this. Read that for me. Daily Wire co-founder Jeremy Boring noted Trump's pro-life legacy while deeming the reproductive rights post Trump's worst statement since he first launched his campaign in 2015. So this guy is so um, anti-reproductive rights that he won't even get on board with the rebranding. Right. I don't. I don't want any confusion. Like we yeah. don't want women that rights. No, these guys, yeah, this, this, these guys are not the most liberal guys. No. <laughs> these Daily Wire boys. No, but it's interesting to see a conservative perspective on it because it's, it's like, you know, like I, I know what a Democrat would say about that post. Yeah, he's it, just twisting words or whatever. Yeah. No, he's but like, don't, don't, like, he's like, it's like, hey, we don't, we don't want anyone, to, don't get it twisted. I don't want war. Like, don't probably, say that. To be fair, he's probably right. It probably is too confusing politically yeah. to start saying, I'm for reproductive rights. And try and saying like, well, my version is good because it's like then if, if anyone who agrees with that will just like vote for Kamala. Do you Harris. think Trump is secretly turning? <laughs> I think it would be really funny if he got elected again and became a Democrat and became like the most progressive Democrat. And I mean, I never <laughs> thought. Decades. Look, I, 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 I could be wrong. People would say there's you know point holes in this, but you know, like, I think he was a Democrat for many years, mm-hmm. and I, yeah. I just thought like when he got if he got elected, I'm like, well, he probably just like well, the sm- I thought the smartest thing would be. I'm probably wrong about this, even on a cynical level, to just like just become like a centrist and like get a bunch of stuff passed, right? And people will like you because he wants to be liked, right? Yeah. But uh, he ended up just becoming really, uh, you know, very conservative, and then people liked him for that, right? So I mean, uh, you he's know, just I mean, likable. <laughs> he's just a likable guy. He really should have been like, you know, uh, on the Today Show. 
Yeah. They should have given him the day show. And I don't mean, I'm not one of these people who like. Oh, that would have been great. I mean, they would have loved it. Because I'm just saying, like, they, 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 people go, oh, if you didn't cancel The Apprentice or whatever. Did they cancel it? I'm not even sure. But people go, oh, he would have, uh, you know, he would have, uh, but I'm, I'm, not, so I'm not saying in that vein. We're like, oh, he wouldn't have been president. I mean, I, I, I still think as a president, he should be headed to the Today Show. Yeah. If he gets elected, they should also give him the, I think the president of the United States should host the Today Show. <laughs> I think you should, like, from the White House lawn, they should let people on the White House lawn. And then, like, with signs. And, like, like what are you doing? Yeah, they, I, you've watched the West Wing. It's like, oh, the president's got so much to do. Most of that crap doesn't need to be done. Right. You're meeting with veterans, whatever. Meet, you know, get, get, that's what the vice president's for. Or a general. Give him a general. Veterans are like, you know, I mean, oh, you oh you won the Battle of the Bulge. You know, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I got to be on the air. You know? I'm sorry. I got makeup. <laughs> what do you? I mean, oh, he's got to meet with NORAD, the, you know, the Pentagon. But, yeah, the president should never be ha- should never have to hand out medals. The, pen- the president, like the, the whole like a joint chief, like oh, he's the commander in chief. That should only be like for bomb, like nuclear bombs. Yeah, we we there's a reason we have generals. President, it's not like the president's doing war plans. They're deciding to go to war. All right, they decide to go to war. But the idea that he's the head of the army is kind of crazy to me. Mm. It's like just because you decide to go to the war doesn't mean you're the head of the army. Technically, it does, but I think it's crazy. I think we stripped the president of that right. Like he's <laughs> like like the queen. The queen can probably England can probably say don't go to war or not. maybe not. She's just don't, she's dead. Yeah. But uh, what do you think? Maybe you we don't agree? maybe we should split it up into two, yeah maybe we should split the president up into two roles a commander in chief and yeah. a queen. Okay, yeah. and only queens. Does yeah. the president is the president always a man? The and the commander in chief will you know yeah we you know the commander in chief is has to be a man and but the queen is also there yeah and they split up duties so the queen just does the stuff on TV mm-hmm. yeah you know, and and does post like, the Today Show yeah like does like apple pie tutorials on on tr- TikTok <laughs> apple pie tutorials <laughs> yeah, make an apple pie again it's like all right, well, mm-hmm. this time we're using sour cream they get lost yeah um. And then the other guy is just <laughs> bombing Yemen or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Why wouldn't that be better? It could, um, I don't think it would be worse. Well, we're already, I mean, yeah. Well, how would it make it better? Because we're already doing awful stuff with the military. Can't say for sure it would make it better. <laughs> you think he would go war less or more? If, you're all, if your only job more. is to go to war. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, we already go to war plenty. Yeah. Imagine if that was your only job. Like, I, like I was just twiddling your thumbs. Otherwise, mm. like, I mean, they won't even let you make an apple pie. To, no, that's the queen's job. I, um, I have a different recipe though. It's a, it's a Hungarian recipe. My grandma. We, sorry, you can go go invade. Uh, go invade Bel- Belize if you want. <laughs> that's that's your job. <laughs> um, but you're above. Don't worry, you're above the law. But we just don't want to hear from you. Yeah, I mean, unless you're invading. Unless you're, unless you know, you're showing us the spoils of war. <laughs> this is this is a this is a a pot from the museum that we bombed. You know, a little pottery. <laughs> That's cool. Maybe we can have an antiques road show kind of thing. Maybe we can talk about that. We can talk about doing like an antiques war show of like war relics from the wars you start. Mm. Pieces but, of great but artifacts. You, but you can't be on today's show. It's structures that you've bombed. Yeah. Yeah. I think the president should be more into that stuff. They should have war trophies. Like, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't even be something you like. You should be forced to show war. Like, it's like we, the, the people deserve to see a little, like, it's like bread and circus. The people deserve a little bit of entertainment. Now you might have, even, we, even if we accidentally attacked like something, you know, Mm. Like if we accidentally, uh, like when we accidentally blew up that pharmaceutical factory, supposedly with oh. Clinton, it's Saudi Arabia, it was that Yemen, I don't know, it was Sudan, Some, it was during the Clinton administration. But they should have had this. He's got like you know bo- melted bottles of you know Prozac, yeah, whatever. Oh yeah, that'd be and great. Like, oh, this. <laughs> he's like, uh, this is awkward. <laughs> um, I know usually we like we make it look like the, the, we're, we're we're fighting a righteous war, but we didn't have time for this. Mm. It was an accident, but I still have to legally have to show you these spoils of war. Right. You know, mm. um, it would just be humble. It'd be a humbling experience. Yeah. Do you think people? How, can, how often do you think it should happen? Every time, every, every oh, like if there's a war, mm. I think every day the president should have to show some remnants, <laughs> or once a week maybe, once sure. a week. 
Like, you know, what, like we, what, could he ever show like, it, is this, is it, is it a family friendly antique show or is it like, could he show the, you, you, I, I think I know what you're asking. Can, can, you, can, can this show also double as like where you air like the hanging of Saddam Hussein? Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not technically an antique, but you know, <laughs> I think we'll bend the rules a little bit. It's in the spirit of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's like one that will come up in the pitch meeting? <laughs> like, and we'll also sometimes hang war criminals who, who we deem who we deem to be war criminals. <laughs> What's this? I, I thought we were doing an antiques roadshow thing. Well, it's, it's, there was a jumping off point. Maybe at some point their body is going to get stuck. Maybe maybe they, they stuff their body and that's the it's, antique. Oh, like taxes. So now this seems to be. Awful. <laughs> yeah. It seems to be worse. Like now we're taxiderming people just, just to fill airtime. Why did we split these two people up in the first place? <laughs> this president and this queen. What's the queen doing? <laughs> just, just doing apple pie? Yeah, she's talking to Michelle Obama on the Today Show. You think by the time we get this going, Michelle Obama will still be popular? <laughs> she might be the queen. Oh, wow. You know, I've always said she should have run for president. Mm. Not because she's like qualified. I, I, don't get, don't, people get so twisted sometimes. He's kind of, ah, you think Michelle Obama's qualified? I think anyone's qualified. Yeah. First of all, anyone who, but whatever. But what, who cares? She's charismatic. And, uh, you just mean she could win. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I just thought, like, why don't, why don't they run her? Yeah. What's the difference? What's the difference? For all I know, she's a, she's a, she, she, she's a, she's a Marine. I don't know. <laughs> Tell me she's not. Is she? <laughs> Probably not, right? Probably not. But I don't know for sure. Like if, you, if you bet me $1,000, I wouldn't take the bet. <laughs> um, do you think if she was, do you think if, if people would be, have a different opinion of the Obama? If she was a Marine? I think more women should go to war to, when they marry political candidates. <laughs> <laughs> like It just seems more like, especially the Democrats, they need that. They need, they need to be able to go, look, my wife defended this country. <laughs> she put it all on the line for you slobs. Every president should have to make his wife do uh, military exercises. Yeah, just show like, like, you in know, the rose garden. Yeah, just show off your wife's war trophies. Yeah, and like just pictures of her, like you know, I mean, like imagine if, like Ron. I mean, it could work for Republicans too. Imagine if Ron DeSantis was married to that woman, Lindy England. Mm. Remember Lindy England? She right. was from uh, the Abu Ghraib thing. Yeah. I mean, he could have been like my wife. My wife, Lindy England. She gave. She put it all <laughs> on the line. <laughs> For this country. No one, so who cares if it's weird how I eat a sandwich? You know? Yes, I'm awkward at diners. Why? Well, I don't go to diners. I, I'm a ghoul. <laughs> but my wife is Lady England, so let me be president, please. I think that would be, I think that would be splendid. Um, anyway, this says social worker jailed. What is that? What is that story? A social worker was jailed? Social worker. Oh, school worker. School worker. Jailed for stealing chicken wings worth one point five million. That's a fun story. This is a fun thing to wrap it up on. I mean, so how does this happen? I mean, are these like how many chicken wings amount to one point five? That's a lot. Chicken wings are not expensive. I mean, they're they're not cheap. I yeah, guess. Yeah. So how many? I mean, let's see. A school worker has been jailed for nine years. Nine years after stealing one point five million worth of chicken wings. Ask for, hey, look, how many chicken, we'll figure it out in a second, but think about this. How badly is your school run that you didn't notice that $1.5 million worth of chicken wings we're, we're, we're gone missing, right? Yeah. Were kids just not eating? I imagine they were still getting their food. So $1.5 million, ex, well, let's read this. Vera Lindell's long, year-long heist, one year, that's it. Of the flightless birds, <laughs> the heist of the flightless birds soared to 11,000 cases of the... Wait, hold on. Read, read that for me? Am I crazy? Am I having a, a stroke? Vera Little's year-long heist of the flightless birds soared to 11,000 cases of the wings. They, they just get kids right out of, like, you know, trade school to be yeah. journalists and, like, yeah. national journalists now. <laughs> I guess this is, not, this, is not, this is not a paper of record, maybe. News.sky. I'm just saying, that's real bad writing. I'll, I'll 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 just say it. Yeah, you're you're a bad writer of the flightless bird. That's what are you doing? <laughs> anyway, she's like, I need to find a way of describing chickens without saying chickens. Yeah, just don't use because the first draft, the first draft, she just said chicken sixty eight times, and, and the editor was like, can you maybe just change the word chicken? You know, poultry sometimes, and <laughs> the flightless bird. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
sort of 11,000 cases of the wings, which were meant for students during the height of the COVID pandemic. The 68 year old started the scheme in July 2020 and was not found out until a business manager at her school near Chicago found that food costs were 300 grand over budget during a routine audit. I mean, how to, this is good for her. <laughs> People are like, oh, yo, this is a problem with this country. It's like, hey, this could, you put me someone in charge of a school, right? You start a school. And there's a bunch of money that comes into school, tax money, whatever, money from the government. I think mean, mostly property tax money, right? Mm. So most districts are. And it's like, your first thing you'd be like, hey, should we, how do we verify that this money is not just getting, you know, it was not just taken out of the bank account? And no one does anything. That'd be the first thing I did. Hey, we need like 500 grand. I mean, what is it? Maybe it's probably, every school's probably like, it's probably 50 million. Yeah. Hey, we need 50 million for the school. $50 million? Okay, can I get a receipt? <laughs> Can we look over what you're doing? <laughs> just giving it to her. They don't give a shit. All right. Little bought up a huge amount of food and used a school cargo van to pick it up. Students never saw a single wing. Schools were closed at the time because of the pandemic, but the district was still selling out meal kits to pupils who were learning remotely. Wow. Whatever. Um, she was in a nine-year jail sentence. I mean, I, this can't be on her. No. I mean, you can't, the integrity card can't be what we play. Oh, she, you know, it's like, if you get away with this, fine. Oh, the integrity. It's like, you know, look at the, <laughs> the war. Where's all the, you know, you don't think people are stealing chicken wings during the wars? <laughs> well, fine, put her in jail. She goes, I'm not saying take her out of jail, but I mean, I'm not going to get mad about it. I kind of want to know how she was like, uh, was she like fencing them? Yeah, who's she selling them to? Yeah. That's a great point. Hey, I got a line in some chicken wings. Probably some local bar, I imagine. I mean, I mean, is that what? I mean, maybe I have no. I'm not a business guy. Maybe, maybe these bars, these these scummy bars that we go to, mm. that we you might get chicken wings at. I never thought their budget would be a million five a year. How much you spend a year on chicken wings? A million five. <laughs> I can't. I can't feed my kids. <laughs> Crazy. Um, do you think she should? Do you, do you think that sentence is too light? I think it's too harsh. I think she could. She, she, she got in life in jail. <laughs> life in jail. Just life in jail. I mean, really? Well, I just I feel like I feel like sometimes our show is accused of being too, uh, you know, not you know, fence sitting or or mm -hmm. we don't take a stand. Light on no. crime. Yeah, light on crime or, or too light on crime. I say put her in jail forever. I say I say I say maybe go to Siberia. <laughs> I'm fucking. I'm, I'm making an example out of her. Mm. What do you think of that? Wow. Now accuse me. Of being, now accuse me. Of what you're gonna say? What you say? I, I can. Fucking throw a book at her. <laughs> you're done. You fucked up. You're gonna spend the rest of your life in jail because <laughs> you, you stole the wing. I mean, honestly, it's 1.5. It's a lot of wings. I mean, it's the productive value. I mean, Look, that's it's, a, it's it's pretty scummy. I gotta say, it's stealing from. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, the stealing from kids thing is one. It's. It, I, I, I think the kids probably got food. I think it's just bad accounting, and she stole money from the taxpayers. Right. It's like, oh, you stole from kids. I stole from their parents. <laughs> All right, let's get it. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> I didn't like. I still fed the kids. They still got a, uh, some p some pizza bagels. Yeah, yeah. So I gave her <laughs> some other bad food. <laughs> I mean, honestly, why wasn't anyone going like chick chicken wings? Can't uh, can't be the most efficient way to feed kids. Mm. You know, if they need us to send kids, I'm not judging them, but like this, is, we're sending food to their home, right? Mm. We imagine it's like oh they're, they're not the best uh, provided or whatever it's it's it's, it's, it's you know it's lower income whatever you would call that I'm just saying like is the most efficient way to feed these kids chicken wings they're very expensive for the amount of pro calories and protein and food you get yeah maybe you know can we just give them a thigh <laughs> it'd probably be a lot cheaper to give them thighs they like the wings though because these kids are you know are tender. Yeah, I guess they are tender. They're you, delicious. You, no, no, you can get a lot out of a tender. Oh, sure. A chicken tender. Why not just like a protein mash? <laughs> Give them whey protein. Yeah. Let them bulk up. <laughs> Give them some whey, whey isolate. Mix it with some water. Give them, get, everyone gets a shaker. Mm. And then we wouldn't have these problems. Teach these kids how to lift. <laughs> you know, I don't think chicken wings have that much protein. Mm. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning into the show. Thank you. Uh, anything else you want to add? Um, Should we start like a website to, to get the you know petition more jail time for this woman? 
I, I feel like that could get in the news. And that could help the show, the algorithm, perhaps. Yeah. We could be the, the crazy podcast. Uh, we're that crazy podcast that tries to give criminals, you know, more jail time. <laughs> but only elderly criminals. Because, <laughs> like, I feel like it's, it wouldn't matter to her. Like, she'll probably, you know, she's 68. Yeah. She's got nine years. Like, what's the odds that she lives? I mean, jail's not a great place to live. So, I mean, like, oh, you got 30 more years? It probably won't matter. So it's, it's a victim. It's a victim. It's a victimless uh, hysteria. <laughs> you know? Whatever. Uh, don't forget like and subscribe if you're still here, you're still watching. We well, should be because this is great. Like and subscribe. The notification bell. That's what it's all about. That's what life is about. You ring that bell. You know, in the Navy SEALs, if you ring the bell, it means you quit. Right. But in the rest of life, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> Did you? Ring- you say, are you getting that from GI Jane? No, I didn't see them in movie. I've seen other things about them. No. <laughs> Did you watch G.I. Jane? There's a dramatic sequence in G.I. Jane. Where Does she, she ring the bell? Uh, I, I don't think she rings the bell, but she, I think she almost rings the bell. I feel, like if, I feel like if you're about to ring the bell and you don't, if I was a drill sergeant, I'd be like, you might as well just ring it. I mean, I, I've lost faith. I mean, I've lost faith. In you. I mean, you, know, you almost did, but you didn't. Like, uh, I, we're like the best of the best. You can't be like. Thinking about ringing them. I mean, you could have thought about it, but I mean, the fact that you, you I imagine there's a scene where she's like slow motion, like she's putting her arm there and she takes it away. <laughs> I would, I, I would be like, get out, get out. I, I, I'd come over and ring it for her. Mm. No, you rung it. No, I didn't. I, I decided not to. No, I heard it. <laughs> anyway, there's no shame when you ring our bell. You just get notified when the <laughs> podcast comes out. <laughs> Also, uh, again, the Patreon. You get an extra episode every week, five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash Ray Comp. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you all next week. Have a great week.